And greetings, everyone. This is Terry, naturally, with Terry Talks Nutrition. We're here every Saturday and Sunday, every, well, every Saturday and Sunday, 8 o'clock to 9 o'clock Central Standard Time. And why are we here? Primarily for you. You know, we do a lot of research to bring you current topics, scientific topics, new information on a variety of herbal medicines, alternative medicines, natural ways to become healthier. So the research team all knows this. So why do we want to share it? Well, I believe somebody changed my life many years ago. I had three angels in my life that changed my life. I was a very unhappy teenager. I was angry, belligerent, obnoxious. I was a jerk. And it's all based on diet. The amount of carbohydrates and sugar that I ate that the American people are eating today changes our mental process, our attitude, our moods. We are angry could be violent. And I believe all that today that that is affecting people mentally is based on the American diet, which is made up of 90% refined carbohydrates and sugar, with almost 45% on the average of all Americans, white, black, Hispanic, are obese. That means they are, we are already unhealthy. The most people that were afflicted with COVID-19 were the obese. And the black community had the highest percentage of obesity. Obesity is one of the causes today. As equally as, the, as, as, as smoking to cause cancer. Now, you all know that smoking is bad. Even if you smoke, you know it's bad. Either you don't have the fortitude to stop, or you don't care, or you can't. But if you knew your life depended on it, I think you would. So, think about that. Being overweight just even mildly overweight to the effect of obesity causes a variety of cancers. Now we just don't think about that. But we're here just to make you think. To nudge you. To encourage you to take care of your body. You're only going to have it once. Get as much mileage out of your body as you possibly can of a quality of life that you can. A brand new car. Are you going to treat it and abuse it? No, because you've paid a lot of money for that car and you want it to last. I was out in the field riding with a woman that is a sales rep. So she puts on a lot of miles. And I said to her, I said, wow, it's your car ever nice. She said, I have 300,000 miles on it. Wow, 300,000 miles, because she knows that's her office. So she takes very, very good care of it. She could be spending her commission on her car, but she's smart. We're not smart. Animals are smarter than we are when it comes to health. Because animals eat with an instinct. We have a will and a choice to eat whatever we want to eat. Garbage in, garbage out. You put enough garbage in, your mind is going to produce garbage. Your body, your organs, your glands are going to produce garbage. And you're going to abuse your body to such an extent 
that you're going to wear out your joints and you'll have bone on bone. Now, some of that could have come from an injury. Sometimes we have a lot of abuse put on our joints by our occupation, heavy lifting, excessive exercise, football, sports. While there may be great hobbies and even maybe professionally that you make your living, but they're still going to take a toll on your body, mind and physically, mentally and physically. So we need to really protect the health of our body. And as I always say, you, and I'm not pointing my finger at you, when me, you know, when I'm pointing my finger at you, my thumb is pointing back at me. So it's you and me that are responsible for our health, individually. You can protect your health. You can improve your health. No one else can. No one has the ability to make choices for you. Now, regardless of why you make those choices, that's another story, but you make choices. I make choices. And are those good choices or bad choices? Are they going to hinder us or are they going to improve and accelerate the quality of our life and extend our life? By the way, people eat today. I know they're leaving 10 to 15 years on the table when they're gone. They could have had another 10 to 15 years. But I've had people say to me, well, why would I want to live another 10 to 15 years the way I feel? Well, I grant you that. But if you lived a life that would give you 10 or 15 more years, you'd give yourself a life of quality. Because that also improves longevity. Anti-aging. Now, I'm not saying you're never going to die. You might die at 90 or 95 or 85. But you'll have a quality of life. You won't be burdened with pain and medications and diseases and all those things that go with the aging process. Yeah, we're getting older, but we can get better as we get older. I don't care how old you are or what you're going through. If you change your choices, and if you go to my website, terrytalksnutrition.com, I've got a lot of things on there that will help you make better choices. My diet, books to read, all kinds of good things, and newsletters. In fact, if you go to my TerryTalksNutrition.com website. You can listen to my radio show anywhere around the world. You can pull up radio shows at your convenience. You can sign up for my newsletter. You can all do all kinds of things. We are against the wall. So we have to do extra work to be healthy. Because everything else in this world, in the supermarkets, in the grocery stores, convenience markets, they're selling junk prepared, packaged, refined, and processed foods. Very infrequently do people eat natural foods. A lot of fast food, a lot of junk, a lot of sugar, a lot of refined carbohydrates, which is ultimately more sugar. We consume junk. Our bodies are not junk. And I've got a great lineup of information for you today. We're going to talk about CoQ10, coenzyme Q10. We're going to talk about how to reverse aging with exercise and how to eat right all the time, but especially for the immune system. The immune system is that system in our body which primarily 70, 70 to 80% resides in our gut, that keeps us healthy against bacterial, viral, and fungal infections, against parasites. And men, you too can get breast cancer. And when you look at Google's most researched health question, that is not about COVID, what would you think it is? 
What do people commonly look for on Google after you rule out all the Googling for COVID-19? And pour a cup of coffee this morning for a better, healthier heart. And we get more and more. So we'll never run out of topics, but we always run out of time. So let's talk about CoQ10. What is CoQ10? Otherwise known as coenzyme Q10. Now it is naturally occurring in the body. Now let's pause for a moment. It is made in our body, as is cholesterol. And now I don't know what your beliefs are. I don't know if you believe that we came from an ape. Or if God created our body. Doesn't make any difference what we believe. I believe God created our bodies. Doesn't make any difference what you believe. But the fact is, if something is made in our body, then I think it's pretty much a no-brainer to know that that ingredient is extremely valuable for our health. For example, a lot of the vitamins, we have to eat food. And minerals, we have to eat food that contain those vitamins and minerals. But if a substance is made, naturally made, it's produced daily in our bodies, it must be really critically important for the health of our body. And CoQ10 is manufactured by an enzyme system in our liver, along with cholesterol. Now keep in mind, Statin drugs lower cholesterol and that same enzyme system that produces cholesterol that is now lowered by a drug also lowers the manufacturing of CoQ10. But it is required for a number of health reasons. Primarily to monitor and protect the cholesterol. And it's required for cellular energy. Our cells need energy. And when we talk about we need more energy, well, it comes from the cell. The cell is like a little turbine that produces energy. And it is a very potent antioxidant. Now, when we lower cholesterol with a drug, we also lower CoQ10. Because both fractions, both molecules, are produced by an enzyme system in the liver. So statin drugs are not healthy in any manner or form. Because first of all, cholesterol is not unhealthy for your heart. Triglycerides are. I would be more concerned about the, my triglyc- triglyceride level than my cholesterol level. Triglycerides are a fat produced from the, from the consumption of carbohydrates and sugar. The more sugar you eat, the more carbohydrates you eat, the higher the possibility of triglyceride levels. When people tell me they have a triglyceride level that's four, five, ten times higher than normal, Hey, I know, what, I know what they're doing. They're eating a lot of carbohydrates and sugar. Now, in, in, in statin drug use, 30% of people over the age of 40 take a statin drug to reduce their cholesterol levels. 30%. We probably have about 2.5 million adults, and of a 30%, we have about 100 million people, oh boy, do the drug companies love this drug. They scare the bejesus out of you that if you don't take the statin drug, you could have a heart attack or a stroke. Baloney. More people die 
get this, get this, more people die from heart attacks or stroke having low cholesterol. Not high cholesterol. High cholesterol is actually protecting and supporting your heart health. What is a killer is triglycerides, sugar, and carbohydrates. So the other conditions associated with a reduced CoQ10 level would be heart disease and heart attacks, aging, and diseases such as cancer, Parkinson's disease, diabetes, migraine headaches, and gum disease. Everyone that I've ever talked to that has gum disease, periodontal disease, and I said, why don't you check out CoQ10? Talk to your doctor about it. And everyone that went on CoQ10, the bleeding of their gums stopped. The receding gums stopped, periodontal disease stopped, and all the treatments that were managed through dental care were not necessary. And migraine headaches, within just a week or two, on a good dosage of CoQ10, which I'll relate to shortly, stopped all migraine headaches. Now, just even brief, brief statin drug use depletes CoQ10. CoQ10 was made in cooperation with cholesterol to protect the heart. And researchers found a 51% decrease in blood levels of CoQ10 after just 30 days of use of a statin drug. And with significant reductions noticeable just after 14 days. Some of the most common side effects of of statin drugs are exercise intolerance, muscle pain, muscle destruction, atrophy, and wasting of the muscles. Sometimes the pain is so intolerable that they can't stay on the drug. And even some cases, when they are off the drug, the pain does not go away. It still is so painful, even after reduction of the statin drug or completely elimination. It's destroying the muscles. Here's a little bit to know. The heart is a muscle. Now we've taken away CoQ10 and cholesterol, which are both healthy for the heart. You've heard it wrong for so many years. So many people believe that we should be on a low-fat diet, statin drug use for a healthy heart. Totally, totally, totally wrong. A clinical study in statin drug users found a 40% decrease in muscle pain when also taking 100 milligrams of CoQ10 daily. And I'll tell you about that 100 milligram daily dosage in just a moment. Don't go away. This is too important. Statin drugs also increase up to as much as 58% diabetes. It causes a higher risk of diabetes by 58%. And supplemental CoQ10 has been shown to stop the cellular defects effects of statin drugs that increase the risk of diabetes. CoQ10 is one of the most important nutrients 
molecules to prevent heart disease. A randomized placebo-controlled study, double-blind study, with 420 patients who had severe heart failure, class 3 and class 4. The subjects or participants took 100 milligrams of CoQ10 three times per day or a placebo that mimic the 100 milligram dosage of CoQ10 but with no active ingredient but looked like it, smelled like it, everything was the same except it had no active ingredients. They all were inert. And what were the results of this CoQ10 study? Well, it decreased the risk of all-cause death by 42%. A 43% decrease in cardiovascular-related deaths. And 58% of patients experienced improvements in their heart failure classification. So they were a class 3, class 4. They may have come down to a class 1, class 2. Great improvement. Now this is a nutrient that the body makes naturally. We don't have to go out and find it. We don't have to eat something that has CoQ10 in it. But our body no longer manufactures it because as we get older, we produce less. And so many people, 100 million people or more, are on statin drugs. It's about a $40 billion bang for the drug companies. $40 billion on a drug that has no use. And in fact, it damages the body more than it does any good. Anybody on statin drugs, and I'm not telling you to go off your drugs. I'm not that doctor. I'm not a doctor. I'm just sharing you information that is absolutely true scientifically documented and evidence-based. So talk to your doctor. I'm not telling you to go off drugs. I'm just alerting to you the damage of some of these drugs and why you have been blinded to the truth. They don't want you well. The customers for the drug companies have to be sick to use their products. Sick people are a boon to the drug companies. Keep them sick. So this molecule and cholesterol, CoQ10 and cholesterol, are made in the liver by the same enzyme system. And when you lower that enzyme, it ultimately lowers statin, excuse me, lowers cholesterol but also lowers CoQ10. You can't have one or the other because the enzyme system makes both together. So what do you know? And what should you know about CoQ10? Well, yes, it can be obtained from food. I don't think you're going to want to go out and buy food that contains CoQ10. First of all, it was discovered in the heart at the University of Wisconsin in Madison. And that's where it is primarily found. It is a nutrient for the heart. And especially found in other organ meats. Heart, of course. Kidneys and liver. Not too many people are going to eat those foods daily to get their CoQ10 dosage. Now, as a supplement, it's found in two forms called ubiquinone and ubiquinol. Ubiquinone was the original form of CoQ10. It was scientifically studied for about 20 years and was used by heart doctors, alternative physicians, naturopathic doctors, 
for anyone with heart disease or heart failure or heart in its final class 3, class 4 form. Highly studied and really performed admirably and extensively. And when the patent ran out on ubiquinone U-B-I-Q-U-I-N-O-N-E, ubiquinone, the Chinese started marketing CoQ10 in ubiquinone, ubiquinone form, and the price dropped drastically. So the original company that had the patent came up with a new version that was also patentable, but it wasn't much of a change and they called the ubiquinol the active form, now possible to produce as a supplement due to new technology. They patent this new technology because they were losing their shirt on the ubiquinone to the Chinese. The Chinese took over the market. They had to find some new patent to save their profitability. But the change is so minor where ubiquinone is very, very stable. It doesn't change. It is a molecule that is stable even in light oxygen. It doesn't change. Now I'll tell you why ubiquinol even though they claim it's the active form why it is not, I believe, beneficial. But I've got to take a station break, but I'll come back right after this station break. So don't go anywhere. I'm coming back. I want you back right here on Terry Talks Nutrition. I'm Terry Naturally. And welcome back, my friends. We're here till the top of the hour. We have another, say, about half hour to the program. And I'm spending an awful lot of time on CoQ10 because I think it deserves that. It is one of the most powerful nutrients for the heart. The heart cannot survive without CoQ10. And it is made in the body, naturally, to protect the heart. And it has huge, huge benefits, either by natural manufacturing in the body, if the person is not taking statin drugs that inhibits and blocks the manufacturing of CoQ10. And I referred to two forms, ubiquinone and ubiquinol. One ends O-N-E, the other one ends in N-O-L. Ubiquinone and ubiquinol. Now the ubiquinol is claimed to be better. I have talked to a lot of manufacturers that don't agree with the supplier of ubiquinol. Ubiquinol is only a little bit different than ubiquinone. And it is not stable. So under the minor challenges, ubiquinol converts back into ubiquinone. If you just open up the drum of the powder of the ubiquinol and leave it exposed to the air for 15 minutes, it converts back to ubiquinone. It is not stable. It is not worth the money. And many of the heart specialists, like Dr. Sinatra, He said, I will not use ubiquinol. All the research has been done with ubiquinone. I've used it for 20 years. It works absolutely fantastically. And I know that ubiquinol is not stable. It is very, very difficult to work with as a supplement. It takes special expertise to manufacture a supplement with the ubiquinol. And I don't think manufacturers really care. 
They're not going to rush through that drum in less than 15 minutes to produce a supplement of the ubiquinol. So if you have that, that material exposed to the air for more than 15 minutes, it is no longer ubiquinol. It goes back to ubiquinone, not a stable molecule. Light, your gastric juices in your stomach, even time in a capsule, over time, converts back to ubiquinone. And ubiquinol costs twice as much. It's not worth it. So how do you use CoQ10? Well, 100 milligrams daily of either ubiquinone or ubiquinol, especially for younger people or those in overall good health, will benefit from the least, less, I should say, the less expensive, which is the ubiquinone, than the ubiquinol. Now, people over 40 years of age may have a harder time converting ubiquinone. But I have found, I have, I have found a way to give you a better suggestion to make sure that you can use the least expensive ubiquinone, but use it in a chewable form. A very scientific-minded company in Germany has found a way to take ubiquinone and combine it with a starch from a vegetable. And that starch is called gamma cyclodextrin. The starch combines with CoQ10 to produce a chewable tablet. It's 100 milligrams of ubiquinone bound to the starch from a vegetable. The starch is not converted to sugar. It is not absorbed as sugar. It is not even absorbed. But it's a carrier to bring CoQ10 to the cell. And 100 milligrams of CoQ10 in a chewable tablet form bound to gamma cyclodextrin is equal to eight times more than standard CoQ10. So 100 milligrams is the equivalent to about 800 milligrams of CoQ10 based on absorption studies. Other people may benefit ubiquinol but they have to bump up their dosage to maybe 200 to 400 milligrams. It gets very expensive at that level. Very expensive. Because you can't absorb as much. When the ubiquinone is bound and complex to the gamma cyclodextrin, the absorption rate is eight times better. And it isn't the number that you take. It isn't how much you swallow or how much you take internally, but it's how much you absorb out of that level of what you take. And you should be taking CoQ10 for any chronic disease or illness. Insufficient dietary intake of CoQ10. Increased oxidative stress. And all people taking statin drugs. I think everyone should take CoQ10 because our body should be making it. The body was designed to produce CoQ10. The statin drug users have now inhibited the production of CoQ10, blocked the production blocked the uptake of CoQ10. When we know that CoQ10 is a has huge benefits, huge benefits of improving the quality of life. So 
So if we just look at it from a standpoint of what CoQ10 can do, it's amazing. As I said before, it decreases the risk of all-cause death. I mean, any kind of death. CoQ10, because of its antioxidant effects and because of its beneficial effects to the heart and the cardiovascular system, it decreases the risk of any kind of death by 42%. A 43% decrease in cardiovascular-related deaths, like heart attacks and strokes, and 58% of patients experience improvements in their heart failure classification. That means their heart got healthier. A better quality heart function. Heart, severe heart failure is class 3 and class 4. Many of these patients after taking CoQ10 brought their class down to 1 and 2, which improved their cardiovascular health by 50%, 58%. And here's another one. How to reverse the aging process. You know, I'm not saying we're never going to get old and we're not going to live to be 120 or 130. But let's live as good as we can for as long as we can. That's my goal. If it's 90, 95, 102, my goal is 102. My grandfather lived to be 95. My mother lived to be 97. I want to outdo them by at least five years. So 102, that's my goal. But let's do it in a healthy way. Let's not do it so the last five years or 10 years are in a nursing home. But live as well as you can for as long as you can. So here is H-I-I-T. What does that stand for? High intensity interval training. Which may be a particularly effective way for increasing longevity and anti-aging. Based on a 12-week trial the subjects or participants followed one of three exercise routines and the high intensity resistant training or a combination of both. The results were all exercise routines resulted in improved fitness but only in the high intensity interval training increased cellular lifespan and decrease cellular aging. The effects were greatest in people over the age of 65. They saw a 69% increase in cellular energy. Increased cellular energy translates to a stronger and healthier body and a longer life. Now you think it's possible to eat a diet that improves your immune system, the immune function. You know that they're looking at the immune system for protecting against viral infection, bacterial infection, and fungal infection and parasites. The immune system keeps us healthy. They're exploring now how the immune system relates to cancer. The stronger immune system, the more resistance we have in all disease. And they found that a very low carb diet improves immune function. Following a very low carb diet increases production of compounds called ketones. These are compounds generated when the body burns fats rather than carbohydrates for energy. A lot of athletes carb up, carry carb food with them when they're doing their exercises or running. 
or biking or any major event, they carb up. They may go on a high-carb program for three or four days before the event. They have a lot of sugar, carbohydrates in their body. But researchers looked at the effects of ketones on the immune function. And these ketones, and that is spelled K-E-T-O-N-E-S, ketones. The ketones improve the activity of the T cells, which are immune cells that focus on attacking foreign substances. The better level of T cells we have, the greater resistance we have against viral infection or any other kind of infection. If you're getting sick all the time, you have a cold and flu all the time, or your kids do, it's because they're eating too many carbohydrates and too much sugar, and they're compromising the immune system so that the immune system does not have the ability to fight foreign substances. And they have a viral attack, cold or flu. Herpes, cold and flu, and viral complications. So the subjects followed a keto diet, K-E-T-O, keto diet, for three weeks. Now that's a very short span of time to see any kind of an effect in the body. But it did have a huge effect. It dramatically increased T cell reactivity. It increased T cell strength and increased the number of T cells. T like in Tom. This is your fighter against cancer, against all diseases, against infection. You want a high level of T cells and their strength and numbers. So the subjects of this test or this trial reported fatigue on the first one to five days of the diet. But that reversed because of the change of diet and no adverse effects or side effects were experienced after that. It was just an adjustment to the change of diet from high sugar, high carbs to high fats. And when I say high fats, I mean high fats. A lot of fats in the diet. But no carbs, no sugar. Most Americans today, on average, are consuming 400 to 500 grams of carbohydrates. I keep mine around 75 grams of carbohydrates per day. If you're just starting and you're really, really sick, maybe you have cancer, maybe you have Parkinson's disease, MS, or you're just sick all the time, and you're tired of being sick all the time, I would go on a keto diet that reduced the grams of carbohydrates to 20 to 40 grams per day. If you're grossly overweight and you want to lose weight, or just want to lose weight, in any fashion or form or manner. The keto diet will shed the weight without any help from yourself except to stay on the diet. It is not a diet diet. It's a new behavioral manner of eating. Changing the way you eat. To dump the junk of carbohydrates and sugar. And replace that with protein foods. Animal protein foods. Not plant. There's more to benefit and a better form of amino acids from animal protein of all form. That would be beef or bison or pork or or fish or whatever. 
animal proteins. And a small, small, small intake of carbohydrates and plenty of fat. Butter, cream, lard, olive oil, avocado oil, uh, macadamia nut oil, uh, MCT oils. All these oils are great. And fats, my friend, are your friend, not the enemy. Not the enemy. Look where we have come today when we have avoided fat and carbohydrates and sugar were the main foods selected because fats were the enemy. Look where we are today. The sickest country in the world. The fattest country in the world. It's, it's, it's sad. Totally sad. When we could reverse this if we cared enough to want to be in good health. Breast cancer awareness. I know for women, for sure. But this is also important for men, too. Men get breast cancer. Although rare, but about 1% of all cases of breast cancer occurs in men as well as women. In general, men have lower survival rates from breast cancer than women. Often because they are not diagnosed until the cancer is too far advanced. Typical breast cancer symptoms in men are a lump behind the nipple or bleeding from the nipple. If you see any of these strange signs, please see your doctor. So men, any lumps, bumps, swelling, or redness, around the breast area should be checked by your physician. Don't let it go. It's serious. So, what do you have to do to reduce breast cancer risk? Well, research shows we must address inflammation. Research has found a 21% decrease in breast cancer risk in women who took two of the anti-inflammatory medications, aspirin or ibuprofen, a week. Now, I'm not saying you should do that. I wouldn't do that. But this is a study. I'm giving you the study the way it is. Inflammation causes damage to the breast cells, causing cancer, and making cancer development more likely. But a better way to stop chronic inflammation and breast cancer. And that herb or spice is called curcumin. C-U-R-C-U-M-I-N. Curcumin. It is the key compound found in the root, the underground portion of the plant turmeric. Curcumin is 500 times stronger than turmeric. Turmeric is the spice. Curcumin is the medicine. And it has no adverse effects such as stomach ulcers associated with aspirin or ibuprofen. And up to 80%, 80% inhibition of breast cancer cell replication and spreading of cancer. 40% reduction in tumor size associated with curcumin in an animal model of human breast cancer. In a cell study, looking at triple negative breast cancer cells, curcumin nearly doubled the effectiveness of the chemotherapeutic drug 5-FU in killing breast cancer cells. Here's also a point. When anyone is on chemotherapy, more likely than not, doctors will tell them, take nothing as a supplement. Do not take curcumin. And I can understand to some extent 
that doctors just don't know anything about curcumin. And they don't know what effect it would have on the 5-FU. And if the cancer patient dies after being on curcumin and 5-FU, if they'll be singled out as a quack. But all the top researchers at Baylor University, MD Anderson Hospital in Houston, Texas, City of Hope Hospital in, in Los Angeles, Curcumin actually makes 5-FU more effective at lesser dosages, which then also in turn creates lesser toxicity and lesser chance of killing off brain cells and liver cells. So yes, if it were my family member, I would have them talk to one of these top researchers at maybe New City of Hope or look at the research it has come out of City of Hope, where curcumin actually makes 5-FU more effective and less toxic. Another way to reduce breast cancer risk, more vitamin D, D3. Did you know that in a study of men and women with a variety of cancers, 75% of the patients had low or very deficient levels of vitamin D3. Vitamin D helps cells develop normally and prevents the formation and the spreading of cancer cells. In a study of over 4,000 women with breast cancer, those with the highest level of vitamin D3 had a 50% reduction in the risk of death than those with the lowest levels of vitamin D. Even low dose, even just 400 IU vitamin D supplementation was found to reduce early stage breast cancer by 18%. Now don't let it up to just taking a number of vitamin D international units. Some people today are taking 5,000 units. A few are taking up to as much as 10,000 units. Do you know that may be not sufficient? That may not be adequate for you to have the benefits of vitamin D3 just because you took it? I suggest vitamin D is too important to leave it to chance. Have your vitamin D3 levels checked. Your doctor can do that for you. Tell your doctor you want to know what your vitamin D3 level is. Or you can send a blood sample to a laboratory. They will check your level of vitamin D3. It does not, you do not need a doctor to have this test done by the laboratory. Just find a good laboratory that does vitamin D analysis. And I found some people that were taking 5,000 and, and, and 10,000 and were not getting an adequate level of vitamin D3 levels. And you should have a level between 60 and 80 nanograms per deciliter of blood. So have your vitamin D3 levels checked. It's too important. And with that, my friends, Another time has gone by, another hour has gone by, and we're going to have to run. So I'll be back, though, tomorrow, 8 o'clock to 9 o'clock Central Standard Time on Sunday morning. And remember, you can change your life. No one else can. All by choices. All by what you want to happen in your life. You change your life. You can change your health. You are the only one responsible. Say a prayer for this crazy, crazy world. God bless you and God bless America. Thank you for listening to Terry Talks Nutrition Weekly Show. Don't forget to subscribe and leave a review on your favorite podcast platform, including Apple, Google, and iHeartRadio.